Hello everyone. I've been wanting to do a video for a while now about issues I have with reconstructions of the Roman Lorica Segmentata. So this is sort of a video response to Raphael though. Also known as the Metatron. Sorry, I had to at least attempt to pronounce your name with the Italian pronunciation. Is that right? Sorry if I'm monstrously butchering it. So, uh, he's been talking about Lorica Segmentatas a bit lately. And as an armorer, there are a lot of things about modern reconstructions of Lorica Segmentatas that stand out to me as strange, and some of them potentially wrong. I do understand that it can be quite difficult to reconstruct Lorica Segmentatas with limited information about them. It's not like with medieval harnesses where we have full and complete surviving examples. Uh, for the most part we've got to kind of figure it out. Though there are some more complete finds but I've been looking at as many uh, surviving uh, fragments of Lorica Sigmatata as I can to try and uh, see if some of these things that seem wrong to me uh, turn up in the fragments and so far at least some of them seem to be present on original surviving fragments but not on reproductions that's mainly curvature of the plate and shaping of the plate now I've already done this video once before but it went on for way too long so I'm going to break this into uh, categories of things that I find wrong with reproductions of Lorca Segmentata uh, just to make it more manageable. So to begin with one of the biggest things that stands out to me with reconstructions of Lorica Segmentata is the lack of shaping you know, the lack of shaping on the plates. Normally on reproductions or reconstructions of Lorica Segmentata, uh, the plates have almost no shaping to them, which really does stand out to someone who builds medieval and later forms of plate armor. It seems very rare to find a piece of plate armor that is for example, just a flat strip of steel with no shaping whatsoever, especially a piece that big. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Romans didn't do it that way. With most pieces of plate armour from you know, medieval Europe, uh, there is shaping to them. The, the extra little bit of shaping that's added to them increases the rigidity, probably a lot more than people might think. I'm tempted to do a video showing the rigidity of a slightly dished lame versus an undished lame. Just a little experiment. But it seems strange to me that, for example, there's no dishing on these lames, or especially the lames that make up the chest and the pauldron. However, from looking at original fragments, they do appear to have some degree of shaping. Not necessarily drastic dishing or raising, but even just a slight curvature can make a difference to the functionality of a piece of armour. Uh, the slight curving dishing will change the way it looks, as well as how rigid the plates are. Uh, for example, on this reconstruction, you can see it appears that the lanes, especially around the, uh, especially for the girth hoops, or whatever you want to call them, uh, they're only curved around the body. They're not curved to follow the contour of the body. The Metatron recently put out a video talking about how on a better reconstruction of armor it should taper in. 
to conform to the body, uh, like a cuirass. Normally, for uh, forms of medieval plate armor that we have surviving examples of, the breastplate or the cuirass curves and tapers in at the waist. This is so that it can put the weight of the cuirass onto the hips and, you know, better distribute the weight of the armour. You do not see that on a lot of reproductions of Lorica Segmentata. But if you look at sculptures of Lorica Segmentata, or I should say people wearing Lorica Segmentata, from ancient Rome, you quite often see that the armour follows the contours of the wearer's body. Uh, great example of this is, of course, Trajan's Column. I might talk about issues with how reliable Trajan's Column may be in a later video, if there's interest. So, I'm not sure if anyone's had enough of an original Lorica Segmentata to check if it tapers in, but uh, it seems to be our best guess at the moment that Lorica Segmentatas should have also uh, contoured in around the waist. However, with reproductions of the Lorica Segmentata that do taper in, they still do not shape the plates so that they all contour and create a curvature. Similar to the shaping that we saw on an original suit of Japanese armour in my video looking at an old suit of Japanese armour that was starting to fall apart so that we could have a look at the inside. If you have not seen that video and you are interested in armour or at least just Japanese armour I would highly recommend it because that is an original suit of armour though the different parts of the suit of armour may not have originally been associated with each other but they're falling apart so we can see the inside you know, underneath the lacquer and see what they're made out of. But... In that video you can see that even though the armour is made up of lots of metal, most likely iron strips, they are all slightly shaped which gives a curvature to the overall cuirass. I have never seen that done on a Lorica Segmentata. I cannot prove that it was done historically, however Looking at some photos from museums of fragments of Lorica Segmentata, in this case girth hoops, I'm not sure if I'm seeing a slight curvature or if it is simply a trick of the light, but from what I have seen, they appear to have a slight amount of curvature to them, so they may not have all been curved to follow a contour, even though that would match the iconography. However, I think it is plausible that they may have been shaped like that in original examples. Yeah. This is part one, hopefully, of many issues I have with modern reconstructions of the Lorica Segmentata. I hope you liked it. If you would like to see more videos of me discussing issues that I have with reconstructions of the Lorica Segmentata, as someone who likes to make plate armor please share this on social media and leave me a comment likes are okay but i love reading comments if you spread it on social media and we can get lots of people viewing this it would really make it a lot more fun for me to continue rambling on i have a lot of other issues i'd like to talk about especially the, the shape of the shoulders one thing we really need to talk about is those shoulders. We need to talk about that. There is a lot that seems wrong to me about that 
from a design and functional point of view, as well as comparing it to original fragments and comparing that to iconography that is contemporary with the armor. But that's for another video. Alright, this is part one, hopefully of many. Alright everyone, I hope you have enjoyed this video. See ya.